On behalf of uh, Asian Development Bank, uh, let me also thank uh, Thailand for hosting this meeting, uh, the theme of which I believe is essential for the Greater Mekong sub-region to realize a future that is prosperous, inclusive, and environmentally sustainable. I am very pleased to be joining this distinguished gathering of GMS policymakers, private sector representatives, and development practitioners. This meeting and your presence here provides an important opportunity to move forward the green economy agenda uh, that GMS very much needs today, not tomorrow. Let me uh, emphasize that we have gathered here to identify new approaches that green growth brings to the economies, peoples, and natural environment of the GMS. We'll learn about that what innovative tools and processes exist and what is working and not working in the region. However, from my own personal and professional point of view, more important than the what is the how, and I hope that we can deliberate meaningfully on the following questions. How can GMS governments operationalize the green growth agenda? How can successful initiatives be financed, replicated, and scaled up? How can the public and private sector work together to support these initiatives? And I would personally like to hear, how can ADB better support GMS countries in harnessing the new opportunities for green growth? To answer these questions, we need to better understand the development pathways and trajectory of GMS countries and cast the green growth agenda within this context. Let me briefly uh, share with you our understanding of the development challenge in the GMS. I'm sure that all of you are aware of the impressive development success of the GMS in the past three decades. The sub-region has experienced sustained and buoyant economic growth, accompanied by significant progress on human development, poverty reduction, and health improvement. While the region's rich endowment of natural resources has fueled this economic growth, the development path has not paid sufficient attention to environmental degradation. Growing prosperity has come at a great and ultimately unaffordable price. It has led to decline in the sub-region's natural capital, both in quantity and quality. An estimated 10 to 12 percent of gross domestic product in this region is lost every year through the poor exploitation of forests, land, wildlife, fisheries, as well as through pollution uh, of ecosystems. For example, forest cover loss since 1990 totals 8 million hectares, an area equivalent to almost one third the size of La PDR. During the same period, the total greenhouse gas emission increased by over 75 percent from 1990 levels. In addition, on the people's front, 45 million people, mostly rural and directly dependent on natural resources, remain entrenched in poverty. Prosperity has clearly failed to protect the natural capital it depends on, uh, nor has it benefited many of those who need it most. Economic expansion, combined with population growth and rapid urbanization, has increased demand for land, energy, food, and water. This, accompanied by inefficient resource use, has led to increased competition for resources, rising costs, and a growing set of ecological constraints to long-term human and environmental welfare in the region. For instance, food demand from the Mekong River Basin is projected to increase by 20 and as much as by 50% by 2030, while agriculture growth yield is likely to flatten or remain static. Water demand for food and energy production, as well as domestic and industrial use, is exponentially increasing while ground and surface water sources are depleting and degrading. Managing this for a food, water, energy nexus will be the most critical challenge of the coming decade. 
The challenge is not technical in not only technical nature, but will challenge our institutions and our development strategies, governance systems, and manage and management fiscal regimes. Climate change only adds to the complex picture. Climate change may cause larger declines in agricultural yields, lessen the availability of fresh water, and further degrade biodiversity and ecosystem services. Among the GMS countries, Thailand is particularly, I think we heard just this uh, previous uh, distinguished speaker pointing to us, pointing to this issue. The Thailand is particularly vulnerable to a climate induced change in freshwater availability as the country has the highest ratio of annual freshwater withdrawals to total internal water resources around 40, 41% over 41% uh, when we speak in the Southeast Asian context. Without improved planning and appropriate investments in adaptation, the cost of climate change in countries such as Thailand and Vietnam could reach 7% of GDP per year by 2100 significantly higher than the global average. Now, what are we talking when we talk about the green growth, at least from ADB perspective? It is clear that the region has built its economic growth at the expense of its natural wealth. The development path is unsustainable, threatened by climate change, and makes the poor even more vulnerable. We must find a better way, and find it soon. The case for environmentally sustainable or green growth has never been more urgent. We believe green growth is economic progress that fosters environmentally sustainable, low carbon and socially inclusive development. It is growth that is well distributed and does not compromise ecological assets of current and future generations. Green growth is resilient to climate change and other shocks. I think that we have seen in the last few few years, not only the weather or climate shocks, but also economic shocks, and sometimes they are coincidental, and the, and the effect is devastating not only to economies, but to the people as well. And that also translates into poor management of resources, so the, uh, the shocks of weather from environmental origin or economic origin do play out in the long term. And in fact, there have been some estimates recently that maybe the event third Increasing demand for green goods and services, along with the broader greening of economy through investments in renewable energy and energy efficiency, creates new jobs. The United Nations Environmental Program and the International Labour Organization estimates the transformation to a greener, a greener economy could generate 15 to 60 million new jobs globally over the next two decades and lift tens of millions of workers out of poverty. Imagine the economic and social impact of this transformation. Even if only 10% of these jobs were created in the GMS, it will definitely make a big dent in terms of the poverty and vulnerability of the region. Indeed, I believe that we can do much better than 10% if the right mix of policies and investments are put in place to create the enabling conditions to deliver an educated workforce, workforce ready for the green market. Uh, in the region. Now, what is the role ADB is playing so far and where it will be going in this direction? To operationalize green growth, we need to go beyond the buzzwords and put the concept into practice. Key actions to operationalize green growth include promoting sustainable investment, physical and natural capital, strengthening resource governance and capacity, responding to climate change, and enabling people to harness new economic opportunities from green growth. ADB stands ready to work with GMS countries to all, in all of these areas. One approach is to combine, where applicable, finance, leverage, uh, of those finance and knowledge, and in our terms, finance plus plus. Allow me to highlight uh, some examples uh, of current initiatives. Before I get to specific initiatives, I think one of the key challenges for us, and, and I'm very pleased to be partnering the, in this effort, is, and this is where I think ADB has you know, historically and can do better in the future, is its convening power to bring together many partners in the region. And we have a very strong history in the Greater Mekong Sub-Region Economic Cooperation Program. So just providing the platform, like these ones, for a dialogue, is one uh, specific 
uh, strength of AGB, and we would like to continue in that uh, in that uh, effort. Furthermore, in the region, at the regional level, ADB promotes sustainable investment infrastructure, infrastructure through the GMS Regional Investment Framework. Uh, one of our colleagues mentioned about the 2012-2022 GMS Economic Cooperation Program strategy. The Regional Investment Framework, I believe you will hear a bit more tomorrow about the specifics of this, is the operational investment framework for, for this program. And we are working with governments to develop a pipeline of new projects, loans and grants worth around $9 billion uh, to, towards the economic integration for the next decade. This framework gives us a unique opportunity to increase investments in sustainable infrastructure in the region. Let me remind you that this $9 billion investment is not primarily just coming from ADV resources. We are, it comes from the uh, GMS countries uh, themselves. And we are looking forward to partnering with private sector and other investment partners in this, in, in this effort. At the country level, ADB is providing investments and technical assistance in the energy, transport, and urban sectors. We have invested in the first two solar energy projects approved in, the, in, in Thailand. We are investing in the Hanoi Metro rail transport system to increase public transport and foster pedestrian-friendly urban transport. We have also recently initiated a new project for Vietnam and Myanmar that aims to develop green cities. We also work with countries to address cross-border issues. Through the GMS Core Environment Program, ADB is supporting Thailand, Lao PDR, and Vietnam to pilot green technology to reduce energy use from road freight, uh, road freight along the GMS East West Economic Corridor. Alongside investment in physical infrastructure, ADB is promoting investment in the region's natural capital and improved resource governance. With ADB's technical assistance, the GMS governments have piloted landscape-based approaches to integrate conservation and development in key transboundary forest landscapes. These successful pilot pilots have been scaled up through ADB's Biodiversity Conservation Corridors Investment Project in Lao PDR, Cambodia and Vietnam, totaling over 70, about 70 million investments. We'll also soon uh, be commencing work on economic assessments of natural capital and ecosystem services in the, G in the GMS to inform development planning and investment planning. Climate change is an area where the ADB's Finance++ Plus Plus approach is clearly demonstrated. We are building GMS capacity to assess climate risks with the aim of mainstreaming climate consideration in decision making and identifying adaptation options which could be piloted and scaled up. As massive investments are required to adapt adaptation, we are intensifying our efforts to leverage external finance. The Climate Public-Private Partnership Fund has been established for this purpose. This uh, billion dollar plus investment vehicle in which ADB has made an equity investment of about 100 million is set up to mobilize financing both, the, both, for the, both for the public and private sector. Through this fund, ADB will expand its traditional role of financer and bring to the table leveraged resources along with its development knowledge to help countries address climate change. Last not, but not the least, ADB is supporting people of the GMS to reap the economic and social benefits from a green economy. The Biodiversity Conservation Corridor projects are funding livelihood diversification for us dependent communities through activities such as green value chains and agro-livelihood-based tourism. Through the GMS, Greater Mekong Subregion Core Agriculture Support Program, ADB is promoting agriculture trade and agriculture investment. This program will develop clusters of agro-industrial, small, medium enterprises which will be supported by an agribusiness network capable of responsible, responding to new green market requirements. This program will also help establish networks of certified organizations to support eco-friendly supply chains that are founded on community and participatory certification systems. Public-private partnerships, we have all heard that this is essential, this is not an option, this is a necessity. Ladies and gentlemen, a transition to a green economy will not be possible without strong and committed leadership from all parties. 
in this context, private and public partners have to play their respective roles. I would also like to stress the importance of public-private partnerships on the investment side, not in terms of just coming together on dialogue, but then translating them into actual investment on the ground. On the one hand, GMS governments need to re-establish clear policy priorities, ensure good governance, and set new indica indicators that go, go beyond GDP to track broader economic, social, and environmental progress. On the other hand, the private sector has the resources and know-how to catalyze, finance, and scale up initiatives which benefit the environment and create green jobs. The two sectors must work hand in hand, and the time is ripe for doing that in the GMS. Key areas in which I see public-private partnerships playing a, a crucial role are developing sustainable infrastructure and green cities, deploying frontier technology, such as precision agriculture and efficient water supply and reuse, and developing small medium, small, medium enterprises and green value chains, which help local populations reap the benefits of green growth. Let me, in closing, like to reiterate the importance of pursue, pursuing a green growth agenda for the future of the GMS. We need to chart a pro-poor, pro-environment roadmap for the region. The challenge is again, is great, but the potential for gains is undeniable. I firmly believe that JMS is ready to take on the challenge and the benefits will be felt, to, uh, felt for generations to come. We in ADB are committed to be a partner in this dialogue and beyond. And thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.